Okay, thanks everyone to join this uh, presentation. Uh, this is Xinhui Li from VMware, and uh, this is Ethan from IBM, and uh, they are both the core of Sunlin project, and Ethan also the hit core. So here I will first uh, introduce Ethan for the background introduction. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, for this topic, uh, we have two parts to cover. Uh, first part is uh, the requirements for the HA solutions in the OpenStack, and the second, uh, second part is the auto heating solutions uh, that we uh, implement uh, using the Sunlink project. So this is the first part. <coughs> uh, we have uh, we already have uh, several presentations for HA in the past summit. Uh, which means that the HA solution in the OpenStack is a very important part uh, in, in the uh, OpenStack community. So uh, the HA solution here is to help to eliminate the single point of failures and also help to achieve uh, the cloud SLA and the applications in the, uh, in, for the uh, clients. So <coughs> when we are building a single system, uh, we might fa face many uh, facility failures like the uh, power loss or, or the uh, fire or fire in the database or something like that. So we, we might need, we need HA solutions to protect, uh, to protect the service running in our cloud. And also, uh, you know, it is not a perfect world. Anything can fail the, uh, at any time. So, the network component in the cloud is not, in, in your system is not reliable. The network card can fail and the cable may be disconnected and the physical network could be offline. So we normally use the bonding technology for the, uh, for the network cards and connect the two network cards into the di uh, different uh, physical switch. And also the storage component is not reliable. So we use the RAID technology to uh, create a cluster of hard, hard disks. And also our uh, operating system is not reliable. Maybe it will crash, maybe because of uh, running out of uh, memory, or maybe a kernel error. And, and also the applications, uh, applications running on uh, the operating system is not, is not uh, well coded or it may not handle an unexpected errors or it's being attacked. So all these things will cause the failures in, in a single system. And in the cloud, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of machines here. So anything can fail at any time in our cloud. So we must prepare for these failures. So in the cloud, we are running many services like cloud management service or the uh, network controller service. And we also use some uh, software-defined technologies like uh, software-defined networks and software-defined storage. All these all this, uh, technologies are used for the virtual machines running in our cloud. And the virtual machines are actually running the applications that used by our clients. So the SLA of our, our cloud actually impacts the SLA of our uh, clients. So that's why we need a trade in our car and why we must design a solution in the cloud for our clients. So when we, when we are building a uh, solutions in the cloud, we need to consider many uh, aspects. So, so normally in our cloud, uh, we, are, we, have, we have some uh, multiple availability zones and multiple uh, regions. And we normally tell the, our users to deploy their virtual machines into the different availability zones so that if one availability zone is not available or it's uh, a sign of the host are under maintenance that uh, the, the applications or the uh, virtual machines running on the cloud won't stop, the, won't stop their uh, service. 
and and when we when we use the multi regions, when we will help our clients to design their uh, their network topologies and also help them to keep their uh, data consistent. So that's that's how we normally we do it in the cloud. But actually, in the open stack, in the open stack, we don't have uh, auto healing solutions for the virtual machines. If a virtual machine is failed, who will recover the virtual machine, and who will uh, provide the who will provide the SLA of the virtual machine? So there is no such a solution yet uh, in in uh, open stack. So 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 uh, okay. I will go to this picture. So in the open stack cloud, actually we need four levels of HA solutions here. The first level from bottom to top, uh, we, the first level is the host level. In the host level, we have uh, some uh, mutual solutions for it. So, so uh, we don't care too much about it. But the second level is the uh, open stack level. This, in this level, we are running some open stack services like uh, open stack APIs. And we are running some uh, OVN technologies uh, uh, software-defined network technologies uh, like uh, network, uh, network controllers like uh, Dragonflow or OVN or OpenControl. Um, and also we need to provide the, the uh, HA solutions for these services. And also we, we should use a database and a cluster and use the message queues in the cluster. And we have some uh, technology for this level, like the pacemaker and HA policy and zookeeper. And the third level is the VM virtual machine level. And in this level, we normally use uh, the we normally use uh, instance group. And for this group, we should provide some uh, some some uh, health policy on it. And when we, when we provide the uh, HA solutions for this level, we should consider uh, when the virtual machine migrate, do we, how do we migrate the network, and how do we migrate the, the volume that are t attached to this virtual machine. And also, if we, we can use the uh, KVM live backup for, for virtual machine, that would be great. But we don't have a common solution for this level yet. And the fourth level is the uh, application level. And this is the most important level for our clients because uh, our clients are actually uh, running their applications in our cloud, not just rent a virtual machine. But we haven't reached there yet. We, we haven't reached the application level yet. But maybe we will in the future. So this picture shows how our clients use our cloud. They normally use the, an orchestration engine like Heat to create a bunch of uh, virtual machines and as a cluster and distribute this uh, bunch of virtual machines into the different availability zones and then use the software deployment a technology like a uh, cloud init, Ansible, Puppet, or Chef, or Sort, to deploy their applications on on the virtual machines. But uh, Heat is not a live management tool, so it will not Heat will not recover the fill fill the virtual machines. And also in our cloud, actually we we treat the uh, virtual box as a black box. But actually, the user cares more about the applications running in the in the box. So we normally we cannot we don't have any solution to monitor the applications running in the in the virtual machines. We can we can only monitor the virtual machine status itself. So <clears throat> so unless we uh, unless we run some install some agents in the virtual machine to monitor the the status of, of applications and send out the habits to some uh, monitor service. Or we can use the, uh, we can use the load balance to, 
to monitor the exposed port if the if the port cannot be reached for a period of time we we can think that the application is die so we can do the recover operations okay so that's how we design our HA auto healing solutions on the open stack. So normally the user will, the client will create a bunch of uh, virtual machines as a cluster here, like a VM cluster. And normally, normally we could install an agent in the uh, guest OS to monitor the status, the status of the applications and send out a heartbeat to the monitor service. Uh, but normally uh, in some, some of our clients will reject to uh, install the agents. So we could uh, use some like a uh, libre uh, to check the virtual machine status or use the HA proxy to check the exposed port status and send out the message or send out the habit to the, to the monitor service through the uh, hypervisor. So when the monitor service uh, didn't receive the habit for a period of time, he will think the, the application is run, running in, the, uh, in the, this cluster is, is failed or is not available. So all, all the monitor service send, uh, receive, receive a, a failure message and he will and the monitor service will send out alarm to the HA engine here. When the HA engine receives this, this alarm, and he will check if a VM cluster has a health policy. Actually, in this health policy, we can provide some different level of SLA for different, for, uh, for different users. So HA engine here will check the VM cluster if it's a, attach a health policy. If it already has a health policy here, then HA engine will try to, try to make this VM cluster back to healthy. So he, he actually will do the recovery operations here, like a rebuild or recreate or, or migrate or something like that. So, so that's our design for our customers. Actually, this design will go through three phases here, the failure, the recovery, and the monitor here. When a normal uh, virtual machine goes to the failure, first thing we should do is to detect if it is a, uh, what kind of failure it is. It is a hardware failure or a software failure. And then we should decide if we need to do the fencing here. Okay, the fencing here, it means that the fencing technology here could help us to avoid the spree brewing situations. Uh, for example, uh, if, if, the, uh, if one of the hypervisors network is, is disconnected, when, and then we will not receive the habits and then we will try to do the recovery operation like uh, recreate another virtual machine and install the applications on it. And when the network is comes back, so at this time we have two copies of this virtual machine that will, that will cause the spree brain uh, situation here. So when we do the fencing, we will kill the original virtual machines so that we only have one virtual machine running in the cloud. And when we detect the failure, we will go to the recovery uh, operations here. When, when before, the recover, because before we recover the uh, virtual machine, we, sh we will temporarily disable the uh, monitor policy for this virtual machine. And then we will do uh, recreate or rebuild the virtual machine. And when the virtual machine is ready, we will try to install the the applications into this virtual machine. And then we will re-enable re the monitor policy for this virtual machine. And then monitor service will continue to monitor this virtual machine or monitor the applications running in the virtual machine. 
until it die again. The design of this picture is simple, but the details is not easy to handle. So next part, I will introduce my colleague uh, Xin Hui to give you more details about how we implement the, the auto healing solution using Sunlink project. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yisun. Okay, so uh, you already know the high availability things is uh, very complicated, very complex, and uh, anything can break the availability. So we're trying to use leverage Sunlin to help this scenario. We cannot say Sunlin will handle everything, but we're just trying to help. Okay. So uh, this problem domain is very huge, so we can only choose the job right following to the range of Sunlin to resolve. So here we're trying to focus on the VM level availability. And uh, here uh, we're trying to firstly give a quick overview about the Sunlin's scope. Sunlin actually providing uh, the clustering service to help the cluster co uh, create the provisioning and uh, uh, operation management, something like this. And as this graph you can see, we encapsulate the different kind of resource computer networking storage uh, by profile. That's uh, you know abstract to mention what kind of resource you want. And using the profile, uh, you can create uh, uh, delete, uh, resize, and scale out, scale in you cluster. And uh, that makes us very good at the cluster ma uh, operation management. And uh, uh, you, besides the cluster level action, you can definitely uh, operate any single node. And uh, you also can divide the nodes uh, belonging to a cluster by row. That means we can well support the uh, blue-green deployment. You know, that's very useful for the transparent rolling upgrade. And uh, we can attach, detach policies with the cluster to manage and, uh, um, you know, uh, guide how the actions I just mentioned work. So that makes us very useful for the auto-scaling and auto-healing scenarios. So that's uh, uh, all these functions can be exposed as uh, RPC already exposed as a REST API. And we have implemented the overall documents and uh, examples. And uh, I want to uh, emphasize two key plugin mechanism we provide because that's the uh, uh, foundation of our auto healing uh, uh, support. So one is a profile, that means we can use this abstract to mention what kind of resource you want to manage. And nowadays we have four kinds of resource. That's a container, heat stack, NOAA, that's VM, and uh, ironic uh, physical host, something like this. And we can also define a group of rules to check or enforce before or after the connection uh, actions are performed, such as the placement and the auto scaling and the deletion, all these things. Different policies we can cooperate them together, such as if we attach both the scaling and the placement. That means you can control where the node you want to place when scale out or scale in happens. So that's very useful, and uh, because we can leverage all these mechanisms to set up an end-to-end -end customizable auto-scaling loop uh, by yourself for any special uh, purpose. Uh, actually, this is a um, uh, foundation we provide, I mean, based on the Sunlink scope actions and the profile plugin, such kind of foundations, we indeed extend uh, some functions especially for the auto scaling support. Here, as I show, uh, we start the heat uh, health manager inside each, uh, you know, Sunlink engine because Sunlink support multiple engines for scalability and that uh, consideration. 
And in this health manager, we can help to provide the polling or listening detection help to uh, know the status of the cluster and the node. And after that, uh, you can do the you know, recover or something like this, the loop we're trying to provide the embed uh, kind of detection for you to help the uh, typical but generic scenario. And on the other side, besides the embed uh, detection mechanism, we also provide a receiver that's abstract to help to receive the message or uh, expose the URI for the third party monitors that can be OpenStack monitor or non OpenStack monitor to call together. And we provide the lifecycle actions, as you already know, delete, create, reset, or something. But besides all these things, we indeed provide the uh, cluster check and the cluster recover, two actions especially for auto healing. That's because we're trying to you know, expose, uh, use them uh, because all these functions are already exposed as a REST API. We're trying to help the, uh, those who care about application level uh, you know, the failure. And we can use the REST API to close the loop with the layer, you know, special uh, layer own uh, application failure detection mechanism. And uh, we provide uh, different kinds of policies, such as uh, uh, health policy and the placement and the scale out, scale in, such kind of policy to collaborate together to build the loop uh, and uh, let the user to customize. Okay, I will give more introduction one by one, all these extensions. The first one is the deployment. Firstly, I can see uh, the auto healing uh, is a key capability for the cluster management and operation. But we can see the strategies we used uh, during the placement or resource scheduling stage will have a long lasting impact on the uh, availability of the you know, workload. So here we provide the uh, different policies such as uh, affinity and infinity and uh, across easy and the region things to help this stage. And nowadays, we uh, provide the affinity anti affinity policy to help the NOVA resource. That means we can help to uh, decide if we need to put the VMs into the same hypervisor or different hypervisor. And uh, across Asia and the region, that means we can give the weight of different uh, room or region. And we, uh, suddenly, we will ask validation from the uh, Keystone and the NOVA to know if the given rooms and the regions uh, valid or not, and then schedule the node into different zone and, uh, uh, and the region. So the across AZ and the cross region policy can be applied uh, with the uh, uh, NOAA profile and the hit stack profile. So that's uh, our help uh, on the placement. And uh, the next uh, one is uh, about uh, the failure detection. As we already analyzed, the uh, availability is a very complicated, very complex, and any component can fail. And uh, you know, no, nothing can immune to the failure. So if we want trying to create the comprehensive detection, that's, uh, I think that's impossible for Selene to do that. That's definitely out of our scope. So what we are trying to do here is provide some help to the typical and the generic scenarios. And we provide some plug-in mechanism to collaborate with a third party to close the loop. So that's what we trying to do. The first one is we provide the health manager and uh, uh, it can cooperate together with the health policy. That means once you attach a health policy to the cluster and uh, underlying the policy will register the cluster to the health manager. And the health manager will start the detection based on the detection type defined in your health policy. Now these two types are supported. One is the node status polling. The other is the VM lifecycle events. Uh, that's both, you know, by polling or listening to the events of the NOAA to understand the status of node and clusters. 
And on the other side, besides, uh, you know, that's just the kind of embed mechanism, that's very simple, but we're trying to help the basic scenario. And if you want more com comprehensive detections from the third party monitors, such as Celometer, Monica, and, uh, you know, Nigel's, that's totally uh, non open stack monitors, or any enterprise monitor, such as VROPS and Arkin, something like that. You just use a receiver. That's the result created inside the Sunli engine. That means uh, there are two types of the, you know, the uh, receiver, receivers we can, uh, we can create today. User can create a receiver to trigger some specific action on behalf of some user or program when, you know, special events or alarm fails. So that's the reason why we can cooperate together. We have two types of receiver. One is a webhook, that's a URI, exposed for the third party monitors to uh, just post the HTTP request. And the other one is a message, that uh, means back on the back end we can create the Zakar queue and receive the message from the monitor to trigger the specific uh, action. So that's the uh, detection part. And uh, we believe. Uh, uh, by the external receiver, you know, co collaboration loop, we can collaborate with uh, some, you know, uh, application level failure detection recovery scenario. But uh, that's uh, definitely after for the Sunlin's scope. And the next one is uh, about the recover action. Actually, recover is uh, independent with the uh, policies driving it. So here we're trying to see we provide uh, diverse and different kinds of options inside the health policy for users to, you know, to choose. Uh, for the heat stack profile, uh, the uh, left side, left side lists the actions we support today, recreate, update, and uh, convert if they are ready, we can support definitely. And for the NOAA profile, we support the uh, reboot, rebuild, recreate, and for the recreate, just as the uh, eastern side, underlying we implement the function of VM level. That means delete, really delete the VM before you know start another one. And uh, we uh, support the migrate, uh, called like uh, migrate or live migrate. And uh, of course, we can support. Uh, the special capability from different hypervisors, such as we're trying to, you know, collaborate with VIVR and the KVM and the Zen, such kind of, you know, special things, we can expose their capability into the, uh, as a certainly action and uh, uh, invoke them, uh, you know, in the health, uh, health auto-scaling auto -scaling loop. And after, you know, all this uh, introduction are con conceptual. So here I'm trying to give some examples how to use all these uh, functions. There are three ways to consume all the functions. The first one is, uh, of course, command line. And uh, Sunny has a very good client and the command line support. And uh, the second one, you can use the hit template. That means definitely you can define a template to create a Sunny cluster and uh, attach a health policy or placement policy visit uh, in a one file. And uh, all the process is uh, totally automated. So definitely you can do that. And the REST API, we recommend that because we already expose all the function size. REST API to help those to develop their own solutions or products. And there is a fourth I didn't mention is about Sunny has its own dashboard, but we will not show the dashboard here. As I showed on this page, and you can use a profile to create a cluster and attach a cross easy policy with the cluster. And the after attachment, the placement of the new node or uh, you know, delete which node uh, from the cluster be guided by the policy. And as you can see, after if I give the two as a the same weight, that means I want to put the new node into the zones in a balanced way. You can just uh, attach a cross AZ policy, and uh, any time the scale in or scale out happens, we will put the new node into different 
wrong and similarly if you want to scale in that means you want to delete something we will choose uh, uh, some proper candidate for you to do that to comply with uh, with among different rooms and uh, this example is uh, you, you can attach a health policy and uh, that's registered the cluster to the uh, health manager service and the service will start the listening, uh, start listening the VM uh, lifecycle events. That's uh, NOAA notification, and then trigger the NOAA to do the re recovery actions, something like that. And the third one, this one is uh, is uh, is very different from the several previous pages because that's not belonging to Selim because here we're trying to use webhook to cooperate with any other third party monitors. Here I show the wear of alarms. That means whenever the alarm is fired, so we will post the HTTP request to the cluster webhook and trigger the recovery actions. And in the next page, actually I want to go very quickly about how to, uh, you know, to, to write the templates or what kind of commands you can leverage. The first one is the profile. Definitely you can uh, put all the flavors, the images, all these things uh, into a YAML file and use the YAML file and the command line list layer to create your profile and use the profile to create the cluster. And as here show, you can, uh, definitely build a cluster with a minimum, uh, minimum size uh, has a two instance and the maximum size is, uh, you know, just as you want to define. So very, very easy to use. And this is a sample for the cross AZ policy. Here I list the two rooms and give them the same weight. And definitely you can put all the properties content into a YAML and uh, uh, attach it to the cluster to enable it uh, to help the placement of the uh, nodes across the different rooms. And this is actually similar. That's a health policy. Uh, the command line, uh, command line things I didn't list here because that's similar just as, uh, uh, you know, uh, create the policy and attach the policy. But here, one thing I just trying to emphasize is the detection type here we use is VM lifecycle events listening and the recovery action we defined is rebuild. And the, uh, the last one actually is uh, about the profile and template things is about the receiver and alarms. Here I showed how to build a VR of the alarm. Here as, as we can show, uh, we use the disk remaining, remaining space to trigger uh, the alarm. That means if the VM system disk is uh, less than the two gigabytes, uh, then we will call the uh, receiver recover. The receiver recovery is defined on the left side. You can see here the action attached with the receiver is the cluster size. And that means once the disk remaining space happens, uh, uh, less than the desired threshold, we can trigger the resize. Oh, okay. Uh, after all these, you know, uh, introductions, actually during our development, we identify some tasks as our next step. Uh, the first one is we're trying to extend the uh, detection type we, we can support. We will add two types. One is a member failure of the load balancer pool. The other is about the host status events. Uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, sorry, today, uh, Okai TV already know the status of the member. Uh, in uh, load balancer pool, but it's regretted, uh, didn't you know post the, the events outside. And uh, similarly, in NOVA, we have the hard beat things, but uh, it didn't send out the notification about the host status. So we're trying to change that to help this auto healing purpose. Uh, next thing is about the recovery actions. We're trying to see we provide a rich cluster, you know, management and operation actions. Here we're trying uh, to help the host failure, so we will add the uh, host fencing accordingly, you know, uh, based on our support to the detection type. 
and then definitely we can collaborate with other projects uh, to do the workflow. That means once the detection happen, uh, failure happens, we can trigger the workflow to happen. And then we're trying to extend all the uh, mentioned functions to the container. That means not only no uh, heat, we, we're trying to support more you know, container things to do the auto healing. And for the customizable actions, besides the workflow, we're trying to support the scripts, maybe just specified or written by the user itself. We can just bring them into the loop to do the automation. So that's uh, all the things we recognize nowadays. And uh, uh, one thing I want to clarify is uh, uh, the high availability of auto healing is very, uh, very important, but hard to resolve in one day. And now this we're trying to do is uh, uh, subdivided the data domain into different problems, and uh, we will d resolve it step by step. And uh, on the path, we definitely will uh, keep our mind open to collaborate with any projects and any ideas to achieve the same goal. So thank you, and uh, it's a Q and A time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, why you need Selene database and what uh, data you store here? Actually, in Selene database, we store several things. One is the uh, model things, that means the cluster VM, node, cluster, all these things. And all the actions, you know, policy action, all the management model, we store them into the DB. Selene create all the things and Selene will operate and manage all the things. So we, we have to keep everything together, including the engine, you know, the running information to support the multiple engine and, uh, you know, to operate everything. Yeah. Um, and as I understand, Selene installation also should be high available. Uh, how it works now? Uh, I'm sorry? Um, as I understand, you need uh, to provide uh, uh, HA for Selene tool, right? Uh, yes, actually we're trying to, <laughs> yeah, that's a different problem as we uh, described in the first part. Actually, that's uh, two different things. We're trying to help is uh, to help the cluster, you yeah. know, auto healing things. And uh, for certainly if it uh, belonging to the control plan, that's there is, uh, you know, more mature solutions there, such as pacemaker, remote pacemaker, uh, core sync, uh, you, you know, these things, that's uh, another field. Cool, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm Sampat from NTT. Uh, I couldn't figure out, you said like you're gonna delete the node, b when you the recovery actions, you're gonna delete the node and start a new one, right? The VMs. Yeah. yeah. So how do you provide HA once you delete a node? I mean, that means you lose the, all the contents in the node, right? So then once you start it again, that will be a totally new node. Oh yes, actually that's the reason why we provide the expose the recovery actions as you know options for users choice because only user know how you know what's the impact if the failure happens they will choose the proper way to recover it. Okay, that, that means it's totally configura configurable, right? Yes. Okay. We give the more reachable uh, you know support yeah here. Okay, so uh, the, another question is though all the monitors you have to pre-implement in your the cloud, right? Yes. So all the computer nodes, whether it, they're gonna, you don't, you don't know you're are gonna uh, deploy the HA cluster on that node or not, but you have to deploy all the nodes with the monitor. Yeah, right? that's a good question actually. That's because the monitor actually, that's the uh, outside of the Sunlin's scope. What okay. we're trying to deliver is uh, embed you know, monitoring, uh, de uh, failure detection things just as I, as I uh, 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 presented earlier. Okay. If you attach a health policy, then will enable, you know, the embed detection. 
but uh, you know, for if you want to integrate with the third party monitor, you will you know provide the failure, oh, yeah. and uh, suddenly just provide the receiver to close the loop. You know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the presentation. Um, are, are you considering um, it to be in scope to support um, high availability of like a single pet instance? Would you consider that as like a, a cluster of size one or is that out of scope for Senlin? Uh, actually, that's a good question because uh, nowadays actually uh, we didn't think about that to be honest. You know, but we can collaborate with uh, you know other projects if you provide you know the functions we can collaborate together and suddenly trying to provide the basic plug-in you know framework to you know to close the loop. Yeah. Because it, it it seems to me that this is is kind of more focusing on the cattle side. Than the pets side, and with with pets, there's more um, like recovery after you've done fencing is can be a bit more complicated because you have to rather than just booting up a a new version of the instance, you might have to you know recover the data with the same volume yes. attached yeah. somewhere else and do an over evacuate and so on. Yes, that's the reason why we're trying to, you know, support the customizable action because that's very important for the user to define the scripts or the process how to recover the yeah. node or and the cluster. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>